And she also asks about the ruling on reciting Fatiha when going to Mazar's graveyards. Is this okay or not? Well, we have to know that a woman is not allowed to visit a graveyard. And there is a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ curses women who do this often. So scholars said that it is not permissible for a woman to visit a graveyard simply because she is, we don't have a justification from the Quran and Sunnah. We have to do it as it is. But some scholars thought of giving some classific uh, uh, clarifications or justifications by saying this is due to the nature of women in general. They're soft-hearted, and if they visit the graveyard of a husband or of a father or of a, a son, they would probably cry and maybe do something that would be inappropriate for a woman to do outside of her house. And therefore, it is not permissible for a woman to visit a graveyard, generally speaking. What I read in her question was going to Mazar's graveyard. In, in what I, if I understand this correctly, in some so-called Islamic countries, they have what is known as Mazar. And a Mazar is a tomb that is built over a grave. And people think that this is a saint or a pious person. And they go and pray. And they may sacrifice some animals for this uh, uh, so-called saint and they may put candles and they may um, put forward their requests and needs in pieces of papers and may give uh, uh, sacrifices of different kinds and buy things and food, etc. Such acts would be considered part of shirk that leads to associating others with Allah. Going to the graves and making tawaf or uh, uh, touching them, seeking their barakah, or sacrificing for the saint. This is all shirk. These are deeds that can only be attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal. Asking the saint to facilitate things for us in this dunya, or to prevent harm from coming our way, is major shirk. Whoever does this is not a Muslim anymore, even if he prays fast and performs pilgrimage, because he associated others with Allah. Allah does not forgive any forms of associating others with him. In Allah la yaghfiru ayushraka bih. Allah does not forgive people who associate others with him and he may forgive any other sin to whomever he wishes as stated in two places in the Quran. So going to such saints or to such mazar is completely prohibited for men and for women going to someone who's dead and asking him and telling him that I have this problem I'd like you to solve my wife is disobedient my son went astray I have debts I'm losing my job I'm ill asking anyone other than Allah is shirk if you go to a deceased if you go to a dead person and ask him to do something for you that only Allah can do this is considered to be major shirk and this is not permissible at all. So going to such graveyards for men and women is not permissible. And unfortunately, a lot of the Muslims are heavily involved in such shirk. People believe in such saints, believing in calling the deceased, the dead, asking them for guidance and for help. They would swear by these so-called saints, yet they would refuse to swear by Allah Azza wa Jal. Or they would find it easy to swear by Allah and lie, rather than swearing by these saints and lie. They could never lie. And this is an indication that these are not Muslim, because they're associating others with Allah Azza wa Jal. If you go to Muslim countries, you would find priests, so-called Muslim, that are taking care of these tombs and shrines and, and places of worship 
to other than Allah Azza wa Jal. And they are the priests that take the money from the poor and telling them that your prayers would be answered, you will have a child, and your debt would be paid, and this and that. And all of this is blasphemy. You're associating others with Allah, even if you do this with the Prophet, Allahumma salli wa sallam alayhi. Even if you go to the grave of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and ask him and address him, O Prophet of Allah, do this for me, do that for me, or ask Allah to do this for me or do that for me, this is shirk. Because you're asking someone to do something that only Allah can do for you. And why go to saints and to humans when you can go and turn to Allah Azza wa Jal? They say, yeah, we know that, but these saints, these pious people, they're closer to Allah. So we call them so that they could call Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is exactly what the mushriks, the mushrikeen of Mecca replied. When they were told, why do you worship these idols? They said, we don't worship them. We don't believe that they have life and death in their hands or that they uh, get the rain to fall down or that they bring us provisions. We don't believe this, but we take them as intermediates to Allah Azza wa Jal. So it's our way to Allah through them. And Allah described them as mushrikeen, those who associate others with Allah. So this is a very major issue. It is far greater than how you pray or how you fast. It's far important, more important than committing adultery or drinking intoxicants. These are sins, major sins. But what I've just mentioned is something that annihilates Islam, that voids Islam, that cancels Islam altogether no matter what you do. And it's something that we should take care of.